Good morning. And welcome to worship on this beautiful morning. A special welcome to our guests who are worshiping here today and also for those that will be joining us all over the continent by a live stream this morning or later. It is good to worship together. Note the announcements in the bulletin. The flowers this day were placed by Doug and Kate Harwood in celebration of their 18th wedding anniversary. Congratulations. Note also one of our former associate members, Marianne Anderson, uh, went to be with the Lord on August 30th at the age of 94 up in Duluth, Minnesota. Please keep her family in your prayers. In the back of the bulletin with the announcements, you note that there is uh, a possibility if you wanted to help out with the hurricane relief, just make those checks out to the church and we'll send one check from the church here. Also, the, this is the God's Work Our Hands Day, Sunday, and the Mission and Social Concerns Committee thanks you for all of the gifts that made it possible to take gift cards to all of the nurses in the ER at the medical center. Note also on Mondays, the summer sewing group, and on Thursdays, the crafting group. As we worship this day, we celebrate our Lord's Supper. Our Lord's Supper is open to all baptized believers who trust in Jesus as Savior and who seek to learn to live with him as Lord of all areas of life. As you come forward, you'll receive the wafer of bread in your hands, and you will have the option of choosing from individual glasses. The darker colored liquid is uh, wine. The lighter colored liquid is white grape juice. So you choose which you like, and then after partaking, you dispose of it at the baskets at the end of the pews. We do ask that you would kindly fill out one of these colorful communion slips that you find in the bulletin. There is room at the bottom for prayer concerns that are given to our prayer team. There is also room on the back for other options to select from or to get some information to the office that would really be helpful if you would write it there and uh, turn it in so that we don't have to remember all of it as you come and go this morning. Please stand. We continue our worship on page four in the folded bulletin as together we affirm that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us silently confess our sin against God and one another. God of all ages, you have chosen us as your own, yet we so often live as if it were not so. We succumb to things which are not good for us. We believe we know better than you. We refuse to put our trust in your promises. Sweep away our foolishness and bring us into a trusting relationship with the one who has lovingly created us and longs to be our strength and life. Dear people, hear the joyful words that God has forgiven us. Our misdeeds and folly are forgotten and grace and mercy abound. Let us give thanks to, that we have a compassionate creator. Amen. Our gathering hymn you'll see on page five and the last few words of it are on page six in the bulletin.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray, merciful God, you created people not as subjects to rule, but as partners in tending and enjoying this bountiful earth. Help us release our shame and guilt over what we have done wrong, accepting instead your mercy and forgiveness offered through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. first lesson for today is from Genesis chapter 2. 
These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. Now the serpent was more, serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But the God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm for today is Psalm 14, and we will read it responsively. Fools say in their hearts, there is no God. They are corrupt. They do abominable deeds. There is no one who does good. The Lord looks down from heaven on humankind to see if there are any who are wise, who seek after God. They have all gone astray. They are all alike perverse. There is no one who does good. No, not one. They have no knowledge. All the evildoers who eat up my people as they eat bread and do not call upon the Lord. There they shall be in great terror, for God is with the company of the righteous. You would confound the plans of the poor, but the Lord is their refuge. Oh, that deliverance for Israel would come from Zion. When the Lord restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice. Israel will be glad. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this 15th Sunday after Pentecost from the Gospel according to St. Luke the 11th. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us time of trial. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Have you ever made a promise to someone? Think of those promises. This week I came across one of the funniest promises, even though it does stretch the truth that helps us get into the Genesis text for this day. Because it reads that God promised men that good and obedient wives would be found in every corner of the world. And then God made the world round, and God laughed and laughed and laughed. This morning... We begin our fall focus on important texts from the Old Testament. When you have time at home, please take your Bible, find the place between the Old Testament and the New Testament, put your hand there and look from the spine down. You'll find that about two-thirds of the Bible is Old Testament. And it is apparent that God has some important stories there and important things to say to us, and that is why we take this time in the fall of the year. As you take your bulletin and turn to 
that first lesson, you'll see that it begins at the beginning in the first book of the Bible, which is Genesis. And you might notice that the teaching title is Copyrighted Creation. In other words, God's still the owner of all of God's creation. We as people are simply caretakers of what we've inherited. We talk about creating things, but in all reality, we just make things out of what is already here. Focusing on God as creator is important for us as people of faith. And it's also a source of great comfort because we are focusing on a creator who is intimately involved with his creation and also with you and with me. Think of it this way. Our very bodies are on loan from God. Our loved ones are on loan from God. All of the property in the world is on loan from God. So we start here in your bulletin in chapter 2, as we have there the second story of creation, different slightly than Genesis 1. It's important when we look at this text to understand that the Bible doesn't seek to be a science book. It doesn't seek to be a history book, even though there are science and history in there in places, but it is a book of faith. In other words, it was a gift from God to explain to the people God's story with the people. Well, what does that mean? Well, we know in our day and time that there are two camps in the world. There are the creationists and there are the evolutionists. And when they want to go to war with each other, which they often do, the Bible intends to tell us that whatever way or whatever manner brought about the earth and the universe, that God was totally involved and that God was in control. Many years ago when I was in college, I majored in biology and minored in chemistry, and over the years I've, I've kept learning about the new tools uh, of science that help us to understand more and more and more of the complexities of life. For instance, those little things in your cells that hold all the information. A single human chromosome contains 20 billion bits of information. The equivalent of about 3 billion letters or about 2 million pages, which would fill up about 4,000 textbooks. And that's just one. If all of the DNA molecules in one cell were unwrapped and stretched end to end, the total length would be about 6 feet. Almost every cell in your body contains six feet of DNA wrapped up in a real, real small space. You see, God was totally involved in creation. And as the story goes on, we read that God got down and dirty, if you will, that God got down and took some of the dust of the ground and formed this human being in his own image, and then he performs the first act of rescue breathing and breathes life into this lifeless clay, if you will. And God takes this man and he places him in the most perfect place, the place called the Garden of Eden, and he gives him the best job, the job of a gardener or farmer, in a place where there are no weeds. Imagine that. And in the parts of the text that are left out of the reading, we find that God created all kinds of animals and that he brought them to the man to see what names he would give them. But God could see that the man was still lonely. He was all alone. And God decided it wasn't good that this man be alone or that anyone for that matter be alone. So he caused a deep sleep to fall, fall upon the man and he takes some of him and he creates a partner for him, someone who could be a companion. I like Matthew Henry's quote. He writes, she was not made out of his head to top him, not made out of his feet to be trampled upon by him, but out of his side to be equal with him, 
under his arm to be protected, and near his heart to be beloved. And no doubt it's easy to understand or to see why she was called woman. Can you imagine? You're the only human being existing. Imagine the first time that Adam lays his eyes on this new companion, the first and only perfect woman. Think about the reaction. I'm sure all he could say was, whoa, man. He was ecstatic. You see, it was all about relationship. And it still is all about relationships. Our relationship with God and our relationships with all people around us. Both relationships need ongoing investments of time and attention. So as we move into chapter 3 of Genesis, we see that Adam and Eve have been given free will, just like we have in this country, and of all of the beautiful and good things in the garden, there's also the tree of knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. All of the needs for this first couple have been perfectly provided for, but Adam and Eve had free will. They could choose. So as chapter 3 begins, we see another character introduced, given the form or the name of the serpent, who is described as crafty. And he begins to make his move on Eve. The serpent is one who is excellent at breaking trust in the garden. So he begins the wor- with the words that call her upon her to question God. See the words there? Did God say? Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? And then Eve responds by saying that they were allowed to eat of any tree in the garden except the one in the middle of the garden. And then she adds, or touch it, or they would die. And the serpent responds, you're not going to die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God. So when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, and that it was beautiful, she took some. And she ate. And she then offered it to Adam. And he ate, and their eyes were opened, and their innocence was gone. And they knew that they were naked, and they sought out some fig leaves for coverings. And then they heard God walking in the garden, and they hid from God. In all reality, can we ever hide from God? But we try, don't we? The part that is not told in our text this morning is about the blame game that happens because God calls them to account. And the first thing out of Adam's mouth is, well, it was the woman that you gave me. And the woman, of course, turns and said it was the serpent, right? So the blame game probably continued and does continue down through time, at least for that first family as the kids asked the first parents why they got kicked out of this nice, nice place. And Adam's answering them, your mother ate us out of house and home. (laughs) In all reality, the serpent's temptation is always there before every person. We never get away from it. Telling us that we really cannot trust God to act in our best interest. That we really can't count on God. Telling us that we really have no need of a relationship with God telling us that we really do not have any need of relationships with other Christians in the body of Christ, telling us that God's mission in the world doesn't matter, that what matters only is our own happiness, that God's eternal desire to bring all people into his family doesn't matter. But we need to know deeply in our hearts and minds 
that God brings us along on the most important mission in the universe, beginning right here in Yuma, Arizona. And now, with the wonders of technology, it's actually being streamed all over North America, and we know there are people watching it. And, and you begin to wonder, well, so what is God going to do through that? Whose heart or life is God going to touch in that way? I came across a story that brings home that point. More than 60 years ago, a Philadelphia congregation watched as three nine-year-old boys were baptized and joined the church. Now, things didn't go well for that church, and as their membership dwindled, they sold the building, they disbanded the congregation. One of those boys' names was Tony. And years later, Tony decided to go back and do some research. So he went back and decided to look up the church report for the year of his baptism. And as he looked there, he came across the name of one of the other three boys, Dick White, and saw that he had become a missionary. And then there was the name of one of the other three boys, named Bert Newman, and he knew that this fellow had become a professor in an African seminary. And Tony read the church report for the, that year, and it said, it has not been a good year for the church. We lost 27 members. Three joined, but they were only children. Tony's last name was Campolo. A great Christian author and speaker at many of our youth gatherings. But they were only children. Right? God loves you and seeks to work through your life and witness every day. Because who knows how the world will be changed by that one life that you touch. Please stand for prayer. Holy Lord God, thank you for the example that you gave us of caring so much for your creation and for our first parents. Help us also to carry that love with us every day, realizing that you write the ending to the story of each invitation that is given. Lead us forward, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of the day is on page 11 in the folded bulletin.
We join together confessing our holy Christian faith using words handed down from the early church known as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. The things which were forbidden, which are forbidden, are often the most tempting, and we seem to love pursuing them. Stand between us and our shame, that we might choose instead a path of joy and freedom, and live in the grace which you have offered, God of compassion. Bless all grandparents those who care for and love their children's children, those who serve as surrogate elder mentors, and those who long for grandchildren but do not have any. Strengthen ties between generations that each might be blessed and enriched by the other. God of compassion. Loving creator, you have given us this great garden of earth to till and keep. May we resist the temptation to exploit and misuse it out of greed or possessiveness, choosing instead to cultivate its beauty and share its fruits equitably and justly. God of compassion. So many people are burdened with shame over events long past. Help us all to release what no longer serves us and be open to your renewing love. Send your healing to all who need it especially those suffering and grieving or serving the needs of others during this pandemic and also those joining us through the live stream. God of compassion. Remember, we remember John Chrysostom, Bishop of Constantinople, all creative and courageous preachers of the gospel. Make us bold proclaimers of grace and mercy. God of compassion. We pray for all of our mission congregations, Arab Acres in Yuma, Crossroads Lutheran in Santan Valley, Maricopa Lutheran in Maricopa, San Juan Bautista Lutheran in Tucson, and Vida Nueva Lutheran in Glendale. We also pray for our care ministries that serve the needs of others, like Christ Care, Stephen Ministry, Grief Share, and Mental Health Ministry. May they reach all people in need. God of compassion. Together we pray, Lord, help us, your believers, become disciples who worship regularly, love unconditionally, listen compassionately, speak truthfully, act justly, endure patiently, forgive mercifully, give generously, serve selflessly, invite constantly, pray fervently, witness unashamedly, and live worthily. Receive these prayers and all those which we offer in silence. For the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We know that the offering is received by the back doors as you enter or leave. And for those watching on the link, there will be a description um, in that video of how to support the ministry. We continue with the offering response.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our communion assistants will come forward. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Depart in peace to serve the Lord. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ.
Please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you safe in his grace until everlasting life. Amen. Together we pray. O oh God, in this Holy Communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Amid the cares of this life, strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our sending hymn is found on page 24. invited to a time of fellowship in the fellowship hall following this worship. We also thank all who joined us this day for worship online. Almighty God has created you and has a purpose for your life every day. Lord, help us remember, if you are not dead, may the blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit sustain and surround you keep you from harm, and fill you with courage wherever you are this day. Amen. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah.